all demons and devils and powers, all of them are under your feet. It doesn't matter whether 10,000 demons come against you. It doesn't matter whether 10 million devils came against you. More are they that are with us than are with them. They cannot kill you. They cannot neutralize you. They cannot render you powerless. No weapon formed against you will prosper. A thousand witches may gather in the middle of the night at the crossroad of the village somewhere. They cannot overpower you. Hello everyone. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are watching us, whatever your time zone. This is the right place, this is the right time, and we are so excited that we are here again for the Marvelous Believers Show. It's always a beautiful time when we come here and we get empowered. I am your host, Lucy Lepore, and uh, today we continue with the series of You Are Superior to Satan. We've done two series on that. In case you missed, please go back and check it out. And remember to share these links with your friends, with your loved ones, so that we empower the Church of Christ together. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome Pastor Ben Isaac so that he can continue and uh, give us You Are Superior to Saturn Part 3. We are going deeper and deeper. Let's see what we have tonight. Hello. Hello, hello, this is Ben Isaac, and we want to welcome you to the Marvelous Believer program right here on Wema TV. And we are so grateful for this platform because God is using this platform to relay truth that will change your life forever. What we are bringing here is the opinion of God, God's high opinion of you. These are not ideas from Encyclopedia Britannica, from some newspaper. This is the word of God. And the last time we said, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not a man to lie. God does not lie. It is impossible for God to lie. When God speaks, what he says is true. And I want you to take a hold of the word of God. When God speaks, agree with him. If you want what he says to come to pass in your personal life, Agree with God. Don't contradict God. You see, sometimes when God speaks, many times when God speaks, he speaks contrary to human experience. He will meet a man who is childless and he will cha change his name to call him the father of many nations. That's how God speaks. The Bible says he calls things which be not as though they were. That's how God speaks. God can meet a broke man and say you're a multimillionaire. That's how God speaks. He met a woman in Luke chapter 13 who was bent over. He did not say, oh, look at you, poor thing. You're bent over. That's not how he spoke. He said, woman, you are loosed. He saw the woman loosed even when she was still bowed over for 18 years of infirmity. So when God speaks something to you through this program today, say, yes, Lord, even when you don't see it manifesting in your pocket, in your bank book, in your life, in your home, in your school, in your ministry, agree with God. When you agree, you will begin to see miraculous things happening. If God says you're anointed and you don't have a drop of nothing, agree with God, it will begin to manifest. Okay? So last time, we began to speak and we want to continue talking about how you are superior to Satan and you did not do this to yourself. God did that to you. You, you did not convince him. He did this for you before you knew you needed it. He defeated the devil. I told you how he stripped principalities and powers. He stripped them. He overpowered them. He triumphed over them at the cross. He totally did it for you because he was not under dominion, the dominion of the enemy in the first place. He came and rescued you from that world and he gave you an exalted place. And I told you in the past program that, that you and Christ are seated in that privileged place, that place of highest privilege far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. 
Every bad thing you can think about is within those groups. The demons of disease, demons of poverty, demons of misery, demons of fear. Name them. They are countless. They are all in there. And God, Jesus Christ, has been raised with you far above where they are. You are in a high and exalted place. Are you listening to me? That is the opinion of God about you. So, when you, the Christian, get in trouble with the devil, if you ever find yourself in trouble with the devil, or when you find yourself under the influence of Satan, or under his dominion, it means that you have come down from your exalted position. If you ever find yourself under the dominion and influence of demons and devils and powers and principalities, it means you have come down from your exalted position. And I came here to tell you, get back up where you belong. Because up here, these, these things are not there. Amen. And, and there's going to be another twist to this thing. Just keep following us. So, all devils, all demons, it doesn't matter, in all their ranks, are under your feet. Can I say that again? All demons, it doesn't matter which color they are. It doesn't matter which country they come from. It doesn't matter who sent them. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter their size. All demons and devils and powers, are, all of them are under your feet. On the authority of scripture. And scripture cannot be broken. You see? Now, I would like to say this. I used to hear it when I was young, but I think I now believe it. If you ever have a message for the devil, write it under the soles of your feet. Write it under your shoes and let him read from down there. There is scripture for it. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 14, the Bible says God cast the serpent, and you know that old serpent is Satan. God cast him and says, on thy belly thou shalt go, and the dust shall be your food all the days of your life. The devil is on the ground. On your belly you shall go, and the dust shall be your food forever. Don't look at the devil this way. Look at him down there. If you have a message for him, write it under your shoes. You see, the Bible says in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you authority, power, to tread, trample, walk over serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I feel like saying that again. Jesus Christ said to you that I give unto you power, authority, to tread, to trample, to walk over serpents and scorpions, and over all, power over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy, witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry, name them all the forces of the occult. I give unto you power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he added this, and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. They can't hurt you physically. They can't hurt you in your dreams. They, can't hurt, they cannot do anything. Jesus says nothing shall by any means hurt you. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13, the Bible says you shall be above only and not beneath. You, shall, the marvelous believer, shall be above only, and it's the devil who is supposed to be beneath. <laughs> In Romans chapter 16 verse 20, the Bible says God shall crush the devil under your feet. The devil is always being referred to as being under your feet. Don't look at him like he's somewhere above you. You are superior to Satan. And now I want to give you a number of scriptures which will increase your faith in what God says about you. Isaiah chapter 57, 54 verse 17. Isaiah 54 verse 17. The Bible says, No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And you shall condemn every tongue that rises up against you in judgment. That is the heritage of God's children. No weapon. It does not say the weapon will not be formed. But it says when the weapon is formed, it will not work against you. It doesn't matter what it is. They cannot kill you. They cannot neutralize you. They cannot render you powerless. No weapon formed against you will prosper. A thousand witches may gather in the middle of the night at the crossroad of the village somewhere. They cannot overpower you. 
Isaiah 59 verse 19. The Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God shall raise up a standard, lift up a standard against him. I like it. I like it the way somebody read that scripture. You know, people used to think the devil is coming like a flood. But I, I like it the way somebody read it recently. He says, when the enemy comes against you, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against you. So in other words, the flood is the Holy Ghost. Like a flood, the Holy Spirit shall lift up a standard against the enemy. That's coming against you, whether they are coming against you with, in, with debts, with, with diseases, with fears, with phobias, with addictions, with whatever. It doesn't matter how many millions of them are coming. When they come, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard. The Spirit of God, like a flood, will lift up a standard against him. Did you ever read Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19? The main man himself, Jesus Christ, the head of the church, said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you bind on earth, whatever you refuse on earth, whatever you deny on earth, whatever you disallow on earth shall be refused in heaven, shall be denied in heaven. So you initiate the action here and heaven will back your decision. Do you understand? And whatever you permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. If you prohibit the demons from ever molesting your family or any of the people around you, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you allow on earth shall be allowed in heaven. Do you understand? You are superior to Satan. The Bible says in uh, J James chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. You resist the devil and he shall flee from you. The devil will flee from you. They will flee in a thousand directions. Resist the devil and he will flee. You are not the one fleeing. He is the one fleeing. I want to say it again. When you resist the devil, it's not you to flee. It's the enemy to flee. And that is New Testament. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. The Bible says that um, don't give place to the devil. You, you remember a few days ago, I, I was telling you that it is Christians who have opened the door for the enemy. They have given him place. They have magnified him. They have given him place. They have given him a foothold. But here the Bible is giving you very, very prophetic counsel. Don't give place to the devil. It reminds me of a, some song sung by some people. I think they're from the Caribbean or someplace. They say, shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. It is you to shut the door. Resist him. And the Bible says he shall flee from you and don't give him place. If you find any demons walking all over your place with dirty feet, show them the door. Cast them out. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 4. The Holy Scripture says that you, the marvelous believer, are of God. And you have overcome them. You have overcome them. You have overcome them. You are of God and you have overcome them. Who are the them? The demons, the devils, the powers, the principalities, those things which you're scared of, those things that make other people sick and afraid, and those demons which impoverish people and twist people and, and pinch people and oppress the people. You have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Don't forget that. And I want to read you scripture in Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 from verse 31. I'm just going to speed read it. 31 down. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? And the answer is no. Shall uh, distress? The answer is no. Or persecution? Or famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are, are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is Bible. You are superior to Satan. You are superior to Satan. You are superior to Satan. Listen, there is a story in the Old Testament where the man of God, Elisha, was sitting in his house, I think early morning. I don't know what he was eating, but I think the man of God had coffee and a donut. And suddenly, there was this enemy armies which came, the Assyrians, they came to arrest the man of God, apparently because he had been prophetically leaking the intelligence of the other nation. So the king was like, who is this leaking our intelligence? Who is this always sabotaging our plans? And they told him, no, 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 no. Nobody is actually leaking your information. There is a prophet in Israel, there is a prophet in Israel, and he knows what you're planning even inside your bedroom. So the king said, go pick him. They did not come to congratulate him upon his prophetic accuracy. They came to kill him. So the Bible says they dispatched the entire army. They came to pick only one man of God, one. So the man of God is in his house having fun, and suddenly the whole town is filled with soldiers from another country. And the Bible says his servant, this young man who used to minister to him, came running from outside. Oh, alas, my master, how shall we do? Alas, my master, how shall it? Because he had seen an uncountable host of, of, of soldiers. They had come. They surrounded the house. They surrounded the whole house where they were sitting. And Elisha seems to be unfazed. He seems to be unperturbed by this intrusion. All he did sitting in his chair, I think he was crossing his legs. He said, listen, more are they that are with us than are with them. And that is what I want to tell you right now. More are they that are with us than are with them. It doesn't matter whether 10,000 demons come against you. It doesn't matter whether 10 million devils came against you. More are they that are with us than are with them. It doesn't matter whether all the witches of Africa came around your house. More are they that are with you than are with them. It doesn't matter whether all the wizards and warlocks and all these demoniacs came around your house. Believe the word of God. More are they that are with you than are with them. Angels are everywhere surrounding your life. Let me tell you about the power of one angel. Just one. One. Just one. Jesus is in his grave, dead, a big stone at his grave, and they had put soldiers to guard the grave. The Bible says one angel left heaven and came down. His face was, shy, was shining like the sun. One angel rolled the stone away and sat on it, and Jesus came out. One angel, uh, Peter, James, John, and all the 12 apostles were arrested, and they were put in prison. And one angel showed up, and he brought them out. Peter was in prison behind bars, Acts chapter 12, guarded by 16 soldiers. And there were metallic gates everywhere to prevent him. And this, this man was so dangerous that they had to tie him with two chains. One was not enough. But an angel showed up. One! One angel came into that prison cell and removed the man of God. One angel. One angel came from heaven and slapped a king at the end of Acts chapter 12, and worms came out of him. One angel, one, one angel. One day, the, the, the Bible talks about these Assyrians who had gathered around uh, Israel, and they had come to attack Israel. And the, uh, the king, Hezekiah, uh, took their letter, and he spread it before the Lord, and says, Lord, you know how to read. You see, these guys have come, they have invaded us. And that evening, one angel took an evening walk through the Assyrian camp. One angel, just one. The Bible talks about one angel. He did not touch anybody. He didn't greet anybody. He didn't talk to anybody. One angel walked through the Assyrian camp. And when his walk was finished, 
185,000 men were dead. One angel. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 down to 24, we have come to an innumerable company of angels, uncountable. More are they that are with us than are with them. Would you still be afraid if you found these dangerous looking creatures around your house with the flaming swords? Would you still be afraid? No weapon formed against you will prosper. You are superior to Satan, the child of God. You have angels all around you. The hand of God is upon your life. There is no way you should be afraid of the devil. You should be firm in God's protection. Why do we always think the devil is so faithful that he can fulfill any of his threats against our lives? Why? God is more faithful than the devil. If he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, there is no way you should sleep up in the night wondering, maybe the demon is about to come now. You are protected against the onslaught of the enemy. You are preserved. The Bible says the angels of God, Psalms 103 verse 20, the angels of God excel in strength and they hearken unto the voice of God's word. Angels, and you just don't have one. There are so many of them. There are so many of them. More are they that are, I am trying to kill that fear of demons. I'm trying to destroy your fear of demons and devils and witches and warlocks. You are superior to them. And the angels of... Now listen, that story of these guys who came around Elisha's house. While Elisha was in his house, he didn't even... Be, he was not phased. What Elisha did, he just said, Lord, open his eyes. Because the servant seemed not to know what the man of God had said. So Elisha prayed a prayer that I'm going to pray for you today. He prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And suddenly his eyes came open and he saw another mountain. And the, the, the angels of God, like chariots of fire, were all over the mountain. And this time they were around Elisha. And all of them were waiting for one command from the man of God. And Elisha said, blind them. And all this army of Assyrians, Syrians who came to arrest the man of God, all of them went blind. And one man of God arrested an entire army and he led them to captivity. You are superior to Satan. These angels I'm talking about, the Bible says in Psalms, uh, Psalms 34, that the angel of the Lord has built his tent around about your house. And the Bible says that um, uh, in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, that the angels of God are ministering spirits. They are sent to minister for you who are heirs of salvation. Angels, angels everywhere. Angels around your house, angels in your bathroom, angels in your bedroom, angels at your place of work, angels with your children, angels are watching over your children. Be conscious of these. When you're conscious of them, you'll discover that things are happening. Be conscious of angelic fortification. Stop fearing the devil. You are superior to Satan. These angels are unemployed because of our ignorance. When you speak scripture, when you speak the faith of God, when you speak the words of God, these angels are empowered. To minister for you. They have not been sent to be tourists at your house. They have been sent to minister for you. Angels. Angels. Angels are not little fat babies shooting arrows on Valentine's Day. Angels are mighty. An angel appeared in that prison where Peter was. And the Bible says the glory of God shone in the prison room. One angel. The angel who came to announce to the shepherds when Jesus was born, the angel came down and, and glory shone around. These, these are awesome creatures. If you've heard of a man called Dr. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory, he was praying one day and he opened his eyes and he saw this nine foot tall, his head was even going through the ceiling. And the angel said, I am your angel, I've been sent to minister for you. <laughs> you have angels ministering for you. Amen. Don't be afraid of the onslaught of demons. Don't be afraid of witchcraft. Don't be afraid of what they might be doing. Oh, they, listen, I found, there was a lady I was ministering to in the United States. She had seen some people performing a, a, a sacrifice, a ritual on the apartment. And for some reason, she saw them and they saw her. 
She closed her room. But then those people began to throw curses and things. I don't know what it was they were throwing. And things began to move in her house. The lady ran away from her house for, for many months. She could not enter her house because things were moving. She had seen this Satanists doing some sacrifice or something. So she was afraid of going into her own house. And when she came to the house where I was staying, this lady began to tell me these stories. And I began to show her these scriptures. I didn't even pray for her. As soon as she had this, she walked back into her house and she's never had another sound. She's never had another disturbance. So it is with you. The day you will discover that God has deployed angels to minister for you, protection, to minister provision, to minister grace, to minister life, to minister these good things. The Bible says that angels are ministering spirits. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, they have been, been sent to minister for you because you are heirs of salvation. The word salvation is the Greek word soteria, soteria, soteria. It means salvation, healing, deliverance. They have come to minister salvation, the whole package of God. Angels, they are waiting for you to walk into your rights as a child of God. You are saved. You have this gift of God called salvation. And that's what angels are doing around your house. Become conscious of it and you will enjoy the good life. You are a marvelous believer. I want to pray for you right now. Especially those of you who are afraid of demons and devils. and Oh, there's a witch doctor in our village. Oh, there's a man who wants to cast the whole family. Hey, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That the Lord God will flood the eyes of your understanding with light. That your eyes will open to see angels all, all, all around your house. There is no place you will go where angels are not going. They are going to clear the way for you. Become conscious of it. Praise and worship God for his promises. And you'll be amazed what God will do in your life. Angels are ministering spirits. In other words, they are your servants. As awesome as they are, they are your servants. And they are waiting for you to say something for them to act on it. You've heard of Dr. Oral Roberts, the man of God from the U.S. He was praying one day and this big angel appeared in his room. And the angel said, dispatch me. <laughs> if you don't say something, they will stay there folding their hands. I was watching a program on Sid Roth. And this man of God saw a vision and their angels, they are unemployed. They are just bored. They don't know what to do. Because Christians are spending a lot of their time in fear. Afraid of a defeated devil. Come on. Rise up and become who God says you are. You are superior to satan so i pray for you right now in jesus name that god will open your eyes to become conscious of the world of the spirit in the mighty name of jesus and those of you who've never given your life to christ you really have no protection you, you you're living in a house without walls and these guys can come in and go out and cause havoc they still kill and destroy but in christ you are secure come to jesus open your mouth and say jesus i confess with my mouth that you are the lord of my life i believe in my heart that you have died and risen again for me come into my life be the lord of my life and cause miraculous changes in my life, in Jesus' name, if you say that with faith in your heart, welcome into the kingdom of God. I speak the peace of God over your life. I declare the grace and the glory of God to work in your life. I declare that miraculous things will begin to happen in your life. I command diseases to leave you. They don't belong anywhere around you. Everybody listening to me, if you have pain in your back, touch your back. If there is pain in your chest, if there is pain in your eyes, if there is any kind of disease, touch where you're feeling the pain and the power of God is coming to you right now. I do this all the time. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it. Receive the life of God flowing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I command blindness to go. Every pain in your spine leaves you now. Every pain in any part of your body leaves you now. Satan, I command you to take your hands off these people's lives. You're defeated and you have no right anywhere around them. In Jesus' name. Name. I speak the blessing of God that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to flow through their lives and make them whole in Jesus mighty name. If you believe it, say amen and begin to rejoice. Open your mouth and thank God for what he has done for you in giving you victory over the enemy in Jesus name. Let's meet again next week and keep in touch with us. Bye bye. Wow. That it was powerful. That was something else. I like the last part that he's saying. Can you imagine what one angel does? The things we have read in the Bible about one angel 
and now the bible is telling us we are surrounded by a numerable number of angels really we cannot fear we cannot live in fear fear of demons and the devil who were defeated and disarmed and dethroned wow that was that was something else that was beautiful and i want to remind you to share this with all your friends so that we continue empowering each other as we learn more about how the devil is defeated and how the believer has authority thank you for staying with us and it's always a pleasure let's meet again next week at the same place on wema tv the marvelous believers show bye bye